Hello my soccer universe. I'm currently fighting a little bit of a virus but I still want to make the videos but you see already I, my voice is not all that great and there's also a little bit more minimal background now there you know I don't want to spend too much time arranging these. Um, as for the video this time it's all about one game which to me was the most important game yesterday and yes this is despite the Derby d'Italia, the Derby della Capitale and of course, uh, the Classico. Ajax, Feyenoord was the biggest game yesterday. And it was the one game that really delivered. It was an absolutely exciting game. And we're all going to talk about it. Um, it was also pretty much a title decider. And now we have that Feyenoord are very much in super control of their own destiny for the first title since 2017. Pretty amazing stuff. And what even better for Feyenoord that all the other potential contenders also fell by the wayside and dropped points. So it was picture perfect. A perfect win for Feyenoord in more than one way. Over in France, we had also a, a rather interesting uh, round where PSG lost for the first time since they have Messi at home in Ligue 1 to a Stade Rennes team that was just played it simple, but effectively and scored two quick goals. And then um, the run of Will still. I have not talked too much about him uh, because Reims were just kind of climbing up, but I've always been mentioning that Reims is actually quite good. And you know, not too long ago, I got two jerseys from uh, Reims as well. The run came to an end. After 18 unbeaten games, they lose for the first time to an OM team that actually also was rather efficient overall. But let's start in the Netherlands and, you know, we can go through the other results. I mean, a, a go at Eagles beating Utrecht is probably a surprise, but it's the Klassiker. That's the one thing where it uh, has to start and almost end. What a game, what an atmosphere. And that is despite Feyenoord fans not being allowed into the Amsterdam Arena at the moment anymore. Uh, also a nice tilted bit of Timber Brothers. One is playing for Ajax, one is playing for Feyenoord. They still live together and share a room, which kind of puts a spin on the whole super rivalry because otherwise you cannot put Feyenoord and Ajax fans together. Feyenoord started quite well uh, with a Hartmann Cross being headed in by Jimenez already in the fifth minute and you thought Feyenoord gets on top and they had then another chance or so. Um, so the early stages were Feyenoord but Ajax then took control. Most importantly Hartmann picked up a yellow card which would become uh, kind of crucial then, uh, in the first half. But I think after minute 10, Ajax completely took control and took the game to Feyenoord and Feyenoord were really hanging on. And you know, um, while in Europe I probably would prefer Ajax in the Eredivisie, especially now with Gernot Trauner playing for Feyenoord, Feyenoord is, is the team I really want to win them. That, that, that one. The one thing that also was that Steven Berghaus, who uh, so, uh, switched previous seasons from Feyenoord to Ajax, the Feyenoord captain to Ajax, which is a no can do uh, in a way. Uh, he was very, very agitated in that game and his corner got headed in by Edson Alvarez. And then a few minutes later, um, it was that uh, Hartmann committed another foul, a tactical foul on midfield and then immaculately led him on. And I think this was kind of this was I'm not I don't want to say it's a deciding scene but it could have this could have swung I think Mark Mackley said no I want the players to play it out and I don't want to decide that game I think it was the I think it was a great call by the ref to not influence the game however you could also argue especially for an Ajax fan that was a clear second yellow card and for that reason you could have sent him off and Arne Slot immediately made the decision to take him off and bring uh, Lopez on uh, to kind of get that scare out of the way because if your defender is already on a yellow card uh, there's another one coming very quickly this was a smart decision um, Feyenoord tried to liberate themselves a little bit but Ajax was so much in control of that one and then it was a deep pass again from Berghaus onto Bergwijn who then finds Tadic in the middle it's 2-1 before the half and at that point you really had to fear the worst for Feyenoord because Ajax bossed that game they had complete control but I don't know what happened in the second uh, in the, at halftime because suddenly the game flipped again. And it was Feyenoord who made a few adjustments. And I actually was a little bit surprised that Traunard himself didn't necessarily play that much in defense. Uh, at least that's how I made it out. You know, I'm not a technical expert. 
uh, but you know, I'm always watching Trauner, uh, former last captain. So, uh, they, but I found him uh, playing a little bit more defensive midfield role uh, more than that. But um, there were some definitely some some change in way because Feyenoord came out of the half really yes we cannot lose that one because if Ajax win that one they go top of the table and very quickly Ali Reza pulls a ball in and, and Shimansky in the 50 second equalizes and Ajax couldn't get a foot on the field uh, it was then the complete opposite where for the next uh, 20 or 30 minutes I really felt that Feyenoord had Ajax completely under control without maybe creating too many chances, but Ajax didn't get much out of their own half. It was only then in the last 50 50 minutes, you know, uh, with Klaassen, Brobe and Konsecao coming come, come on, that uh, a little bit more was coming from uh, Ajax. But except for a late chance of, um, I think it, uh, it was Probably, I don't remember now, that um, uh, the goalie, the Feyenoord goalie really saved great. There was not really a big chance, but that would have been the one chance. It would have been so typically Ajax to win that one. But it was the comeback kids. When uh, Hank, Hanko uh, Cross was uh, headed in by Gertreude in the 86, that gave Feyenoord a major, major, major victory. And I always call a 3 to win with two lead changes. That's a perfect win. So already from that moment on, Feyenoord had a, a, I would even say a deserved win because the way that they bossed the second half, that was really, really impressive, I gotta say. And Feyenoord showed that they have the grit and the determination to actually take the game to Ajax and unseat the uh, four times defending champions. I think four times defending, although I don't know how you call the Corona season overall, but what a game that was. It was really one that delivered. Um, I knew that, uh, you know, whatever happened in the other games that I was going, 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 going to watch, I was already satisfied with that Sunday because the biggest game delivered also the biggest uh, spectacle. And as I said, uh, it got even better for Feyenoord uh, with Vitesse uh, getting a point of PSV, uh, who took an early season late when Sangare on goal uh, made it a 1-1. And then uh, Twente also beat AZ, AZ, who with a win could have gotten second in the table. No, Upalde scores in the 8th and in the 11th, and Carlsen can only pull one back in around the 66th. So it ends in a 2-1 for Twente, who have also a pretty good season overall. And uh, looking at the standings, we see now um, it is six points of Feyenoord ahead of Ajax. Um, we have uh, PSV now going ahead of AZ. But it's very much in Feyenoord's hands with a 39% chance of uh, becoming the new champions, uh, which, you know, it would be a good change in the Eredivisie. We also see on the bottom, uh, Groningen and Cambuur look dangerously going down, especially for a traditional team like Groningen. It's a little bit hard. Utrecht have been, uh, had a, a rough form. The one thing is, I said it in a pre pre previous video, I heard that Vitesse have some financial trouble. So they might actually get relegated on the uh, off the field. And so maybe one of those teams can get um, saved this way, but on the field. It's Groningen and Kanker Kampion on top. Uh, Feyenoord very much looking like the new champions right now. And Ajax will probably hold on to that second spot uh, as far as I, can, I would be able to tell. Uh, right after that, I give you the matches here. I mean, uh, there's a Rotterdam derby for, Fe for Feyenoord, uh, which they probably should win. I said against Herrnwein, I think, is, uh, pro is probably an interesting one. Um, and then I think rather uh, straightforward fair afterwards but you know every nothing has been straightforward so far moving over to league uh, we had uh early 1-1 between uh lyon and not and it has test as we said at this moment uh, lyon is definitely only a mid-table team anymore little too late goals uh to beat toulouse uh, you know a toulouse team that has had a really really good good season it actually could win the french cup even monaco bounced back from their loss home loss to uh, Reims. Uh, loss also get 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 get, 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 get wins. and you know you see already that I called it last uh, week I said that the league on title race is over and in every regard it is over however uh, all the teams that were disappointing last week now got the wins a uh, big one in the relegation fight with uh, Strasbourg beating um, Osea 2-0 and then PSG lose it home to Rennes 
And this Ren team, when I look at their squad, I'm actually really surprised of that they're not much higher. They have probably taken now Leon's spot as one of the top challengers. Uh, they have a really, really interesting and good squad. Uh, but they are also a little bit frustrating, I gotta say, overall. Um, because they can beat PSG away from home with relatively easy uh, means. Uh, you know, you just play a deep pass and then a cross in. Uh, and you score. I mean, the first goal was just a deep pass from Buriga. Uh, go on to Toko Ekambi, family of Lyon, uh, who puts it in the net. Um, before that, I think the Mbappé goal was a clear offside. You know, PSG not really showing up and having their usual defensive frailties and maybe also feeling a little bit too secure of themselves. And then just after that, Kalimuendo, another really, really easy, easy, easily played in this 2-0 in the 48th. Uh, yes, there probably could have been a penalty laid on for PSG. There were some uh, messy header shot, but it was a rather stale performance. And I fear this will be another celebration that the fans will do without the team this uh, season. Um, and then uh, the top game between Reims and OM. Uh, Balogun missing already an early, er, early one before giving Reims the lead. But then a brilliant Sanchez free kick. I mean, right against the... Um, upright into the net uh gives them a very quick equalizer and then he scores another one uh on the half hour mark yes let's try to come back Balogun missing a, a big one uh, towards the end but um i think he hitting the post even as far as i recall but it is om that uh ends will stills uh incredible series and so, yes, I called it over. Now OM have a slide in again uh, with only seven points behind. I just don't see it happening. I mean, if PSG throw that lead away, a seven point, 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 point lead, then I think the whole club should actually fold. Um, loss kind of stay in this third spot. Monaco and uh, Rennes also are quite good. And if you look at the bottom, Strasbourg, as I said, it was a big win against Osea, who are now in this last spot. It's between Strasbourg, Brest and Osea. Uh, not probably relatively safe. So the slugfest that we expected, uh, it seems like three of the four already decided in the last spot. Uh, Osea don't look all that comfortable, which we, of course, see also in the expected standings overall. Coming back, we have a formerly big duel between PSG and Lyon. Alas, not really that much in, 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 in anymore. And then, uh, you know, Nice against PSG. This is also a duel that I can see PSG very much losing. On the other hand, I don't know what to expect from OM at this point in time. So, yeah, with a little bit less voice. These were my thoughts on the happenings in the Netherlands and France seems like both leagues are now going clearly one way but we have to see um the super team is bad but i think Feyenoord will probably hang on to that they really have and then they also have the europa league and that uh, i want to say as last last thing if i look at the remaining games for Feyenoord, they look easier than the remaining games for ajax on the flip side though they have to play in europe and ajax are already out of europe any case, please let me know what you thought about uh, the happenings in the Netherlands in France. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.